Hey guys, welcome back to GameStop Expo 2014. Corey has finally joined me back on stage here. It's been a while. I haven't seen yeah, you since this been, morning. It's been a long time. And we, I mean, we kicked off the show here at the GameStop Expo. We've had the chance to kind of go back and forth, really kind of dabble in the areas of our expertise. And uh, we, you both wanted the chance to be able to sit here and talk about Harvest Moon. Yes, Lost Graham Valley. joins us from Natsume. And we are here to talk about your new game. And you go, we were talking right before you know we went live, and you were saying how much of an evolution of the series it is. Because obviously for fans that are watching, Harvest Moon has been around for, for years, you know, like almost two decades at this point, over 30 games. So let's talk about what fans can expect from the Lost Valley. By all means. Uh, that's absolutely correct. The uh, series started in 97 on the Super NES and, and over 30 plus games. And it's been on a variety of different platforms. So what we wanted to do with Harvest Moon The Lost Valley is, is basically make an evolution of the t series. So we wanted to take fan feedback, media criticisms, media you know, positive aspects, put it into a game and try to reach out to new fans. So you told me one of the ways that you guys were planning on doing this was with a, a new story element because, I mean, Harvest Moon is very much known as a simulation game, and now you're adding in some new narrative elements. Absolutely. So there's a main story that pushes the user. So, and and the, basic, the basic premise of the story is the fact that uh, the valley is under a curse. So all four seasons, well, including winter, so spring, summer, and fall, are all perpetually winter. So it's kind of the player's job to figure out how to get that curse off each season. And then as we move forward, you'll be able to actually take part in different aspects of the spring, summer, and fall. So how does the story elements interact with the simulation? You know, we have a little bit of gameplay on screen for you guys here. Um, and, I mean, is it going to just be, like, ingrained in the, in the simulation? Are we going to see, like, special cutscenes? Well, one thing that we wanted to do with the story is actually for the new users is offer a tutorial in a good way. You know, have the tutorial be more of a little bit of a story so the users, new users that are, can get kind of, kind of get used to the, the tool system, how to interact with the villagers, the animals. And the one thing about this game that no other Harvest Moon game has is the customization in terms of an XYZ access. You can actually stack dirt or you can dig dirt, and then you can do a variety of different customizations with that. Oh, dirt customization. <laughs> we are in 2014, you guys. <laughs> Everything's changing for us. As you can see that the, the, in the gameplay that it's kind of leveled. So you can completely customize it. You can dig soil, and then you can stack it up, and it's completely up to the user on what they want to do. You can make a moat. You could put a, a lake next to your chicken coop, or at the same time, you could build a hill and put your barn on top of it. You know, just... Looking at this, and I've read some of the comments on, you know, some of the trailers, and they've said that it looks like it's been inspired a little bit by Minecraft. Would, <laughs> you, would you say that that's accurate? Well, I could see how someone might draw that, <laughs> that conclusion. But if they didn't know that you guys have been around for a long time. Well, but te yeah, right. But technically speaking, you know, it's just the next sort of evolution if you want to go to that next step, that, yeah. that X, Y, and Z, that building up sort of thing. But don't get me wrong. I can see how someone might look at it and say it's a little Minecraft-ish. <laughs> And now we have a yeah. little run around inside the house here. A little quick jump. So if, if those aren't familiar with Harvest Moon, it's that life simulation game. It's a balance between running a farm and building a social life for yourself. So as you can see in the user's house, um, he's a bachelor still. So eventually later, as you start to go through the game and you get to meet the different villagers at the same time, uh, increase their affection, you can actually have a family. To kind of educate a few of us out there that this is my first time. I mean, you, you mentioned to me before that you're reaching out to the old that the, the old guard, if you will, and then you're going back and you're hitting your very hardcore. But as a new user, how do you kind of educate and bring people into the, in the into this game? Yeah, like we were mentioning before, our kind of goal, our focus is, is that we have a, a, a dedicated and passionate hardcore fan base, and and they've been there for years, and we appreciate them. So we want to make a game that's new and challenging and, and right up their alley. But at the same time, we want to reach out to those casual gamers that might have played, you know, Harvest Moon 64 or Harvest Moon right. Back to Nature back in the day. You know, those that are familiar with the, the brand, but at the same time, like, oh, I haven't picked one up in a while. So we want to bring them back with some, evolu some evolutionary ideas that we came up with. We innovated the tool system. We changed the way that they interact with animals. We put in a nice request system. But then at the same time, we want new fans. You know, someone that might have 
played Animal Crossing or something of that nature. And they look at it and go, oh, well, this is kind of similar. So what we've done is that we've put in that elaborate tutorial, but it doesn't feel like you're being bombarded with how to play. Instead, it's right. just that natural progression of, oh, okay, this is, this is easy. You know, this is how you till the land and you, you plant the seeds, you water them, you grow crops, and then obviously you turn that money into something and then you can expand upon uh, your farm by building different barns, chicken coops. I'm glad that you brought up the animal interactions. I know that some of your fans are pretty excited about the changes there. Could you talk a little bit more about what you guys are doing different with the, with the animals? By all means, Harvest Moon games have had a variety of different animals in them. Um, some have had a lot and some have had very little. We, uh, what we wanted to do is instead of quantity, we wanted to focus on quality. So you have your staple animals. You have your sheep, your cow, your chickens, and your horse. But in so what we wanted is we wanted to build a kind of a deeper bond between the user and these animals because, I mean, truthfully, that's why they play it. That, that, that satisfaction of, of seeing high quality products and knowing that your animal loves you. So every animal has a trait. So then there's a variety of different traits in this. So you might have a cow that has a spring trait, which means that the cow is a little bit more happy during the month of spring or the season of spring and at the same time produces higher quality products. And then that, and there's over 30 different traits. So you have these personalities to each of the animals. And then at the same time, when you breed your animals, those personalities go into their offspring. It sounds like it could become very complex very fast. It, well, the beauty part about the game as well is it, it's both. It's complex yet simplistic. The customization can be as complex as you want it to be. You can completely tear down the valley, build whatever you want. Um, but at the same time, you can take it as it is. So if you're a new player, you're not going to feel overwhelmed like, I have to do this. Same thing with the animals. You could just care for the animals. You could feed the animals. You can brush them. You can just take care of them at your own pace. And you don't really have to worry about the complexities of trying to combine two different traits. Let me ask you this, though, especially for the hardcore games. Whenever you start to mention the different types of dimensions for your X and Y, but then you also mentioned the, the, the Z axis there, you know, how, does, how does things change that? How many different levels can you go up and how many different levels can you go down? Because I'm going to dig, dig, dig until I can't dig See what more. you can find at the bottom? <laughs> the middle of the earth. Yeah. Well, th there's actually something kind of neat about what you were saying is that there's secret areas within uh. the valley depending upon where you dig or What's how lost much. lost is now found. That's exactly. Or how much you <laughs> stack dirt. But at the same time, it's 16 up, 16 down. Oh. And, and the beauty That's part of it. That's actually quite a bit, for, uh, more than I anticipated. And, you know, and when, you, when you dig the soil, you keep it in your bag, and then you can take it somewhere else and kind of build a mound, a hill, whatever you want. You know, it's kind of the world is yours, but at the same time, you're not forced to do that. Um, but you can also plant crops on different elevations, and these crops mutate depending upon where they're located. Uh, that's exactly what I was about to ask you, if, if there's different types of crops that kind of react to the different environments in terms of, because you mentioned seasons, which is one thing, that, but then the other element is the, the level element of, you know, if I, if I dig down deep and I plant, you know, a nice little flower down there, is it, it going to grow? Exactly. Well, yeah, pr yes, exactly. So what you can do is you could be on sea level or, or lake level, if you will, and you could kind of plant your, your crops there. Let's just say spinach seeds. So you plant your spinach seeds there, and there's a chance that they might mutate into maybe baby spinach, which will sell for more. But then you can stack a mound up there, go up to the very top, plant the spinach seeds up on top as well. They might turn into giant spinach. Sell for different amounts. You can use these ingredients to make different cooking items. So awesome. it has that sort of, once again, complexity. But then at the same time, you don't have to, you're not really worried about it. You can just grab them, sell them, and buy other things. That's great stuff. Can I just spend the whole game taking care of my animals? You, you know, <laughs> you, a, you would ask that question. You absolutely can. You know, you're not forced to do one type of farming, growing crops, or, you know, livestock, raising livestock. Now, granted, there's a request system in the game, and someone might ask you, can you give me 20 flowers? And if you're trying to increase your affection with that particular person, it's something that you might want to do. But it, the, it, the best part is it's completely up to you. The customization, how you play, how quickly you play, it's all up to you. So I have to ask this one last question. So in terms of the story mode, if I, so you said I can choose my path, but how does the story interconnect with my path? Well, as you saw in the beginning of the footage, you were actually growing crops. It was spring, but it was snowing. So you could still grow crops. You're not forced to like get from point A to B to C in a certain amount of time. You can play, you can get comfortable, you can get familiar with the surroundings and you just kind of progress on. Now granted, you know, looking at a, a winter background for a couple of seasons might be a little, you know, <laughs> might be a little, little yeah. the winter is coming. Uh, that's exactly right. So you, you want to see some green grass and these lush trees and the, the fall leaves. So 
you're going to progress through. And as you just naturally, your progression, whether you grow crops and, and a small amount, a big amount, eventually you're going to satisfy requirements. You're going to unlock spring. Spring's going to show up, and you're going to move on to summer and fall as well. That's great. And you guys are doing special pre-order incentives. We sure are. In the game. <laughs> Our, um, this so is fun, this. funny story. We, we, we made this plush cow way back in the day for Harvest Moon Save the Homeland. Um, it was a cute cow. We thought, this would be great. Let's see how the fans love it. And uh, especially at this GameStop show, they, they love these plush. We've been doing it for over a decade. I mean, they're adorable. We, <laughs> we can't get away with releasing a Harvest Moon without releasing plush. So we do have a pre-order um, bonus at GameStop right now. If you pre-order the game, you get this nice little five-inch dog that's represented in the game. That's awesome. Man, I feel like I need to go put my pre-order in just to get the... Just to get the plushie. I love plushie everything, though. <laughs> Sounds good. So do a lot of people, actually. <laughs> good. Awesome. I'm not alone. <laughs> but, um, it, I, you know, you guys have a, a nice setup, you know, uh, here on the show floor at GameStop Expo. How, what's it been like uh, talking to the fans? It's been fantastic. Meeting the managers, meeting the consumers, it's great. You know, that, that Harvest Moon fan is definitely passionate, and it's great. We could sit there and talk for hours, and, you know, they'll tell us they played on the Super NES. Or my fa I love asking which their favorite is and why and, and moving forward. And a lot of that feedback... Since I've actually been with the company for a while, a lot of that feedback from, from everybody involved with Knott's May has gone into this game. So, I mean, that was one thing that we really wanted to do. We heard what our fans were saying. So we wanted to listen and we wanted to make a game that we hope reaches out to everybody. Well, that is awesome. And you guys will be able to see the game for yourself. It's coming out pretty soon, right? That's right. It'll be out at the end of October. And it's just exclusively on the 3DS? That's correct. So sorry, we you fans. You're going to have to... You know, buy a 3DS. I don't know why you don't have you one yet. You should already have a 3DS. You, you should <laughs> have a 3DS. You should have a 3DS. <laughs> and they have that really cool GameStop exclusive one that we were talking about earlier with the retro that's Nintendo right. on the front of it. That's, that's so right. I can't stop talking about it because I want it so much. But, Graham, thank you so much for coming <laughs> by this Thank you, guys. So I really appreciate it. You